You have to protect yourself as things are spiraling out of control. It's no secret that Americans have been struggling for some time. The same sentiment's true for people on fixed income like Social Security, SSI, and SSDI. It's also true for working class Americans, and heck, it's also true for some of us that make six digits annually. Yes, that's right guys, people making well over 100 grand a year. Now the worst part is that we got companies like Google, Amazon, Wayfair, and many others making painful cuts to their workforce. The layoffs don't hurt the company as much as it does hurt the workers though. And this is something that you need to prepare for given the unsettling reality that we've been in in recent years. But if you thought that layoffs were our only concern, well, you'd be dead wrong. So I'm going to be discussing multiple concerns that many of us are going to be thinking about throughout the year. Concerns that could possibly cripple us financially. And this is a significant round of layoffs at an iconic American retailer. Macy's confirming it will cut more than 2,300 jobs, accounting for 13% of its corporate staff and 3.5% of its overall workforce. The retailer also also says it'll shut down five of its more than 700 store locations as it tries to adapt to a changing marketplace online. Macy's is now the latest high profile company to announce job cuts this year, joining the ranks of Google, Amazon, Apple and Citigroup. But when you take a step back and look at the broader jobs market, layoffs are at a historically low rate. New government data shows that the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits is at a 16 month low and industries like healthcare, hospitality are adding thousands of workers to their payrolls every month. So big picture. Isolated layoffs in the tech sector last year did not stop the jobs market from powering forward. Many economists are hopeful that that trend can continue in 2024. Oh, I love the optimism at the end, right? But do any of you guys feel the same? Because these job numbers that they continue to flaunt in front of us almost always get revised downward. And I want to reiterate here that these layoffs affected 2,350 people. That's a lot of people. 2,000 working Americans now without a job. And they're not just numbers, okay? These are actual people, actual families. And and I think that's what these people miss sometimes is that the outlook and the general feeling is that things are getting better, but I dare them to go to the houses of these people and say that to their face. And it's not just Macy's. I got word of Wayfair laying off 1,650 employees recently. That is a whopping 13% of their global workforce right there. It's also humorous to see how these companies just kind of took on so many people during the pandemic. And now they're being forced to kind of correct their headcount by cutting thousands of people at a time. You see, if we look at the bigger picture, the real one, okay? Companies are looking out for themselves and their shareholders. So if it's gonna make them a profit, they're most likely going to be doing it. And the easiest way to shed weight is through these layoffs. Now, we've talked about layoffs before, right? And the expectation is that it's gonna get worse throughout the year, the same way that delinquencies on pretty much everything will rise as well. I'm talking about credit card bills, rent, even car payments. Things are about to get worse. I mean, look at this, guys. So according to Edmonds, the share of new car owners that are spending $1,000 or more on monthly car payments, it just hit a new record. Can you believe that? So yeah, people are losing their jobs and they're being stuck with car payments that can be categorized as like mini mortgages. And you know what? That sounds just about right because that's where people will likely live if they can't afford rent or their mortgages. I know it's harsh, but it could be true for some people. So let's see here. It says that monthly payments and down payments are also hitting record highs. No surprise there, huh? Compared to the fourth quarter of 2022, when monthly payments were at $717, Monthly payments nowadays have spiked to $739. Down payments on the other end surpassed $7,000 for the first time. But many Americans are having trouble making the monthly payments. Rebecca Jarvis has the details. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, George. Yeah, when you look at these details, it's a pretty stark contrast. A few years ago, there were a dozen new car models that sold for less than $20,000. But today, there's just one model, and the average used car price is now $27,000, up 30% from pre-pandemic levels, with more drivers falling behind on their payments. This morning, between higher car prices and the soaring cost of car loans, consumers are getting squeezed on both sides of the transaction. And now a growing number are falling behind on their monthly bills. Car prices are high and interest rates keep rising. So it's challenging for consumers uh, to uh, uh, come up with these big monthly payments. According to a new report from Cox Automotive, delinquencies have been climbing for the last three months, with the number of people behind on their car payments up 15.7% in July from a year ago. Those severely delinquent, the highest since 2006. A surprising trend with unemployment near historic lows. Some of it is because uh, there was some relief during um, the pandemic uh, in terms of payments. Banks didn't uh, 
uh, go after people who were late on payments. And now those have all changed. I mean, it's gotten to a point where very few of us can afford a new car and not have it financially hurt us. I believe it was mid-December when it came out that the auto loan balances here at home for Q3 of 2023 hit around $1.6 trillion. Now, how do you like that? And the situation is only made worse when you realize that many car owners today, they're paying more on their auto loans compared to their price of their cars. Did you hear about that one guy that had a truck, an SUV, and two motorcycles? Yeah, he was paying like $2,500 a month and he was absolutely underwater with all of these loans. Do you guys know what happened next? Well, he lost his job. This is how quickly things can change for us folks. And in 2024, things can change just like that. Like in one snap, your job is gone, your paycheck is gone, and now you're left wondering how you're gonna make your payments. Now, from cars, let's move on to housing, all right? So the housing market is just messed up right now. The best news that I heard was that Fannie Mae expects mortgage rates to fall below 6% this year. Wow, you know? We'll see, though. And they're saying that we're gonna see this in the fourth quarter. Okay, sure. Do you think that this is gonna create a lot of excitement in the housing market for the year? I mean, home sales are down if we're talking about late last year. Getting interest rates to what, like 5.8% as they're predicting would probably create some change there, right? But if you read between the lines, what they're also telling us is that for the fourth quarter 2025, that 5.8% interest rate will only go down to 5.5%. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the Fed will probably cut rates for 2024 and that's probably about it. They're probably going to keep it propped up for 2025. But at the same time, many don't believe that the good times are now coming because some analysts say that the damage has already been done. Many Americans won't even get this kind of deal because their credit scores are pretty much already messed up. They're also paying more for rent. They're paying more for their cars. They're paying more for food, electricity. I mean, like we're getting to a point where we might see more and more Americans just become flat out broke. But like, what are you guys seeing out there? Do you feel as if there's a reason to be optimistic nowadays? Or are you seeing more rain and thunderstorms? You want to know something surprising? Some news outlets are actually reporting that we're seeing sunshine all over the country. And we're looking at a huge jump in the month of January, reaching the highest level that we have seen since 2021, far exceeding the expectations from Wall Street. And taking a look into exactly what we're seeing from this index, rising 9.1 points to 78.8. Putting that in perspective, it's the biggest month-over-month -month jump that we have seen since 2005. And wrapping in inflation expectations into all of this, and this out uh, the latest here from the University of Michigan, but inflation expectations also coming in a bit lower here. Consumers expecting prices to climb at a rate of 2.9% on a year-over-year -year basis. That's down from 3.1% a month earlier. So more positive here on some progress in terms of inflationary pressures, therefore leading to higher confidence and at least cons a consumer sentiment at this point in the new year. Now, remember what we talked about? We talked about layoffs, people losing their jobs. We talked about car payments and how people can't afford them anymore. We also talked about home sales and how these are down, but they're telling us that the consumer sentiment is positive. Hmm. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys be the judge of that. All I know is that, you know, I'm gonna be here delivering the facts and the news to keep you guys informed here on a daily basis. Now, before I go, I just wanna thank you guys for hitting the like button for the video. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.